Hello everybody and welcome to the third uh, part of my tutorial on how to create a tileable medieval stone floor. Uh, let's see what we have done uh, until now. Uh, first of all, in the first part, uh, we created this mesh, uh, which we did by extruding faces and by applying subdivision surface modifiers. And uh, we came up with this result. Uh, the problem with this result was that uh, uh, you it wasn't tileable. If you put uh, copies of the model, duplicates of the model in a row, uh, there was there were created seams, and we wanted to avoid to avoid that. So we discarded this model, this mesh, and we made some modifications in order to come up with re with this result, uh, which is tileable. So far so good, uh, we have our tileable medieval stone floor, yet there is one more thing we have to do. And this has to do with the, us with the usage of this model. Uh, or here is my model, uh, I haven't applied uh, my mod the modifiers yet. Uh, what I want to say is that, let me apply the modifiers so we have the final result. If we if we go to the edit mode, uh, we will notice the very great vertex number. Uh, we can see that there are a little bit more than 20k vertices in this model, and this is only for an area that's only uh, four by four meters approximately. So you can easily understand that if I want to create large areas covered uh, with this mesh with copies of this mesh, then the vertex count uh, would be uh, extremely uh, big. So th this model is not uh, suitable to be for use in a game. If you wanted to use it uh, in uh, smaller areas, perhaps, or if you wanted to use it uh, for a still image, you could use it. But uh, if uh, we want to cover larger areas, we have somehow to lower the vertex count. So let me make an example to see, just to understand uh, how much uh, the vertex count increases if we create uh, duplicates. I'm adding an array modifier. Let me enable. Okay, they are enabled my screen cast keys okay so I'm adding an array modifier uh, I want to uh, alter it so it uh, it is uh, totally tileable what I want to show is that if we create an area of 4x4 four four meshes okay let's see 4 Okay, okay, let me open the nine. Okay, and open eight. eight. Oh no, 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 mistake here. Okay, so I will close the gaps. Okay, we have this area which is four by four meshes and each mesh is 4x4 four four meters, so you can easily understand that the size is 16x16 16 16. and for this area, for an area of 16x16 16 16, we have 3.5k 334,000 uh, vertices and this is an outraging large number so we have to make some sacrifices uh, in the quality and in the detail of the mesh uh, in order to come up with uh, a version which has significantly less uh, vertices and that's what we are going to see in this tutorial so I'm deleting this mesh and for today's tutorial we will start from this mesh which we had saved uh, in uh, the second part of the tutorial Okay, so I'm going to make a duplicate 
of this one and I will leave it I will place it left to the original and then I'm going to return to my original mesh go to edit mode press alt and extrude individual faces okay I'm leaving edit mode and I will also create a copy of this mesh and I will place it to the right why I'm doing this because I want you to be able to see the comparison between the original and the low poly meshes uh, as you have understood probably I will create two versions the first uh, will have the lowest possible number of vertices and the second will be a little will have a little more detail but uh, okay let me smooth it I will smooth all of them okay and smooth it will have sig significantly less uh, few vertices and uh, it will be a medium state where we will keep some of the detail uh, but uh, it will be low poly as well okay first let me create the original okay we will have to alt s to, sh to shrink a bit control b to bevel a little bit okay i will add my modifiers a subdivision surface modifier type symbol and another subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to leave it to cut mule Clark okay this is the result so what I'm going to do now is I will start let me start with the simple model okay if I go to edit mode I can easily see that this model has 93 faces uh, I can uh, lower more uh, the number of the vertices how am I going to do this okay I will having all the vertices selected go to select and select boundary loop okay now all the boundary loops are selected let me go to edge select mode okay you can easily see that the edge of the mesh is selected and press Ctrl I to invert the result press X and delete edges okay so you are left only with these vertices press A to select all and press Alt F to fill the empty space okay we have we can see that uh, the result of pressing Alt F is to create a lot of triangles you can see that the topology is messy but uh, in this example we don't uh, care about the topology uh, because uh, our ground our floor uh, won't animate so uh, we don't have to worry about the uh, topology of the mesh what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert uh, those triangles to quads I don't know for some reason I dislike triangles I prefer quads so I'm pressing alt J which is the shortcut to convert triangles to quads and I'm going to increase this value to 180 okay you can see that by increasing to this value I'm getting rid of the majority of the triangles so now I have a mesh which consists of only 45 vertices so what I'm going to do now I'm going to create a normal map uh, a normal map uh, is uh, an image but it's not a, a normal image an ordinary image uh, what we want from this image is uh, not to give uh, color uh, to our mesh uh, we wanted to create an illusion the illusion of height and uh, this image the normal map uh, it 
it uh, stores all the needed information in order to create this effect. So I'm going to split my screen into two areas and I'm going to select my UV image editor. I will let's go to the edit mode and I will add a new image naming it normal low low is for the low poly count okay and I'm pressing ok then I'm going to UV unwrap my mesh pressing U and select project from U bounds okay we can see that our mesh, our mesh is UV unwrapped and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place it over the original mesh and first of all I'm going to apply the modifiers in my original mesh and then I will select my low poly version I will press shift I will select uh, my original mesh press shift s and select cursor to select it okay this places the cursor uh, where the center of my original mesh is and then select the low poly version and press shift s and selection to cursor okay uh, if i go to edit mode okay no it's not visible but i believe you can understand that the last action uh, placed uh, my low poly mesh where my original mesh is so my original mesh overlaps my low poly version okay what I'm going to do next is I will select the original mesh and pressing shift and right click this selects my low poly version too now I have selected both the important thing is to select the original mesh first and the low poly version uh, after that so what I'm going to do now okay before I do I notice that there is a problem here which will give me may probably a, bad a result that won't be okay uh, let me know I see strange for some reason when I go to edit mode this edge alters but okay I'm leave it I'm leaving it as it is I hope it won't create uh, an unwanted result so what I'm going to do again select my high poly version then shift right click to select the low poly version too you can probably see 